Could you please uh, introduce us to the world of the series? What it is the series about and what are the topics? Um, Hemlock Grove uh, is a little town, in, a very small town in America somewhere in uh, around Pittsburgh, and um, it's a little mine town, and a family has lived there for, for generations, a very rich family, originally in the mining business, and then with the arrival of my character, Olivia Godfrey, have transferred over to putting their money into uh, the biomedical industry, where there's a laboratory called the White Tower, where all sorts of mysterious, we find out later, experiments take place. Um, in uh, this small town, a murder takes place of a young girl. And we quickly get introduced in this world of very odd characters um, as two uh, young bo two boys, one of whom is my son in the piece and one of whom is a gypsy um, who lives on the other side of the tracks in the, in the little town, start trying to find out what happened and, and who killed this young girl. And we just sort of get introduced into this world of very strange people and <laughs> characters, me being the matriarch of this strangeness. Could you please give us some more details about your character? Uh, well, Olivia is very mysterious and I've now played her for two seasons and even I'm still a little puzzled about her. <laughs> she um, is what's called an upir and sort of a, from the vampire family. She's uh, may have lived a hundred or a couple of hundred years. She's been around for a long time, but she is very intent on keeping whatever her history is um, uh, shaded from or, or uh, you know, s secret and private from anybody else's. Um, she was married, but her husband dies either from a wound inflicted by her or by himself. Um, she has an affair with his brother. Uh, she has two children, a son and a daughter who is, if possible, even taller than I am. Um, she's a giant and she is deformed um, with a very big eyeball. And um, she's called Shelley, kind of modeled after the whole Frankenstein situation. And so uh, she is, you know, not what we call a good mother, but she's trying. <laughs> and, uh, she is up to no good, it turns out, most of the time. But we're not really sure ever where we stand with Olivia. I mean, as it takes us through season one, we think we have an idea about who she is. Some big major event happens, and I won't give it away at the end of season one. When we get to season two, we see a whole different side of Olivia because of the situation she finds herself in then. So she is a bit of a puzzle, and we keep unraveling and finding out little bits of pieces. Even in the second season, we go way back in time. Um, and I speak French in the scene because it's, you know, from a long, long time ago, and, and we see another aspect of her life. So um, I hope that in the third season we see more of that. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Why do you find this mystery uh, genre fascinating? It's quite brutal, huh? It's very brutal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't, I mean, people, this is what people seem to want to watch. For it's, it's not what I watch personally, but it's what people seem to be attracted to. Um, and I'm not really sure why. It's, uh, it's just, you know, I guess it's intriguing. It really takes you out of your own life. It's a, you know, it's sort of a fairy tale with a very, and most fairy tales are really dark, obviously. Um, lots of twists and turns, very unpredictable, strange world. You know, it's, it's what people seem to like. <laughs> so what do you think? Why is this mystery and horror genre uh, quite popular? Um, yeah, like I just said, I mean, it's, it's I, for, it, for whatever reason, I, I mean, it, it's probably related, connected to the fairy tales we all grew up with as children. It's now just put in a visual form. I mean, it, form. if you remember reading any of the Hansel and Gretel and any of those stories, the Grimm brothers, you know, they're really super dark and twisted. And I think um, it's the same thing. It's just put in modern times. But you know, dark and twisted is what people seem to have been attracted to for centuries. Do you think that Netflix has become a new phenomenon and why? Uh, it seems to have become an, a new phenomenon, certainly in the United States already in the territories that have opened so far. And I hope that Germany will follow in the same footsteps. Um, I think the reason is that 
television as we knew it is sort of a bit of a thing of the past because not everybody's lifestyle and is such that you can watch a show, you know, every week at a specific time. We're also a culture of instant gratification. Everybody wants it and they want it now. Well, if that's what you want, you can get it. You can, when Hemlock Grove arrives, you know, you can watch the whole first season. You can watch the whole first, second season. You can watch everything in one sitting if you want to. So it's just much more viewer friendly. Um, and it's not just shows, obviously. It's, you know, in Germany, if there's, if you want to watch German movies that you haven't seen, or in Switzerland, I think you're Swiss, right? You can watch whatever um, you have, haven't seen or you want to catch up on anything like that. So it's, you know, documentaries, films, whatever it is. It just gives you the opportunity to, to, to you know, to really lose hours and hours of your life watching things that you haven't seen or, or you want to catch up on them. It's great. Absolutely, thanks. Last question, what made you decide to take on a role on a Netflix series? Very much um, the reasons we just discussed. It's, you know, like I said, it's part of the future. I mean, when they when they presented it to me, they had just started filming House of Cards. And so to, to go in the, in you know, to be the second series out and say that in the same breath that I was doing something with Netflix who were just doing House of Cards, everybody was like, oh, wow, that's so fancy. Um, so that was one of the reasons. Um, Another reason is that it's, I like the idea that it's somewhere in between television and film. Um, it's not a series in the traditional sense of television making where, you know, you do it on a weekly basis, as in the release of it. So the same rules don't apply anymore. We don't need the cliffhangers. We don't need the commercial break in, in the way that the writing is done. So because people can watch it 10 or one or three or five at the time, it really feels like we're making movies. Um, And it suited my lifestyle at that moment very well because I've been writing and directing and so half of the year could be, um, you know, spent acting in something and then the other time could be spent uh, preparing my own and, and writing my own uh, scripts.